So here's an example where we're going to check controllability of a system. So we're going to do this in the state space because it's state space tools that allow us to check a system's controllability. So if we have a system defined as x dot equals ax plus bu and y equals cx and we have some initial condition x of 0 is a vector x0. So with a system defined like this Let's say that I have a equal to minus 1, 0, 0, minus 3, and b equal to 1, 1. So with the system defined in this way, I would like to know, and actually it turns out that we don't really need to know what c is equal to for this example. So with the system defined as a and b, I'd like to know is the system controllable? And if it is controllable, I would like to find a feedback state. So I'd like to find this feedback state controller F, which is equal to F1, F2, to place the poles at a specific location. So I'd like to place the poles at minus 2 and minus 2. So I'm going to have two poles. I want them both to be in the same place. So with the system defined in this way, let's go through the process of checking controllability. And then if, if it's controllable, then we'll go ahead and define the controller F. So for part one, we'll use the definition of controllability matrix. Which we called E in some earlier lectures. So we build E as... First, the vector b, and then the vector ab. So with b previously defined as 1, 1, now we need to calculate a times b. So a times b, as you recall, a was equal to minus 1, 0, and 0, minus 3. So a times b is equal to a times 1, 1. So we're going to have, oops. So this value is just going to be minus 1 and minus 3. So we substitute these values in here. And so we can see that e has rank 2, which is equal to the rank of a. Actually, it's, it's more appropriate to say that it's equal to rank 2 and that A is in R2 by 2. So because E is a full rank, this tells us that we can actually control this system. Therefore, we're controllable. So this satisfies part I. So now that it's controllable, let's control it. So for part II, or part 2, however you want to say it. So in order for our poles to be at that location, we have to define our characteristic equation as the determinant of lambda I minus A minus B times F. So again, we're going to get to pick F in order to make our system control the way we'd like for it to control. So if we just write a minus b f here, a minus b times f is equal to minus 1 minus f1 
and minus F2. Maybe we should spend a little bit more time on this so it's clear why it is that this is the case. So A, we wrote before, is minus 1, 0, 0, minus 3. And then B was 1, 1. And F is F1, F2. So this is the same as minus 1, 0, 0, minus 3, minus F1, F2, F1, F2. So we can now write A minus BF as minus 1 minus F1, minus F2, minus F1, and minus 3 minus F2. So this is A minus B times F. So I want to subtract this away from lambda i. So lambda i minus a minus b f will be equal to lambda lambda 0, 0 minus a minus b f, which we have above. So this equation will, or this matrix will now be lambda plus 1 plus f 1, and then f 2 plus f1 here, and then lambda plus 3 plus f2. So that gives us lambda i minus a minus bf. And we need to find the determinant of these values and set them equal to lambda plus 2 squared. So that's going to give us values of f such that our eigenvalues will turn out to be minus 2 and minus 2. So I'm going to take this over to the next page here. So now we want to find the determinant, which is going to be equal to lambda plus 1 plus f1 times lambda plus 3 plus F2 minus F1, F2. So that's our determinant. So what I usually like to do here is that I'm going to keep the 1 plus F1s together and the 3 plus F2s together, and then just multiply lambda times those quantities. So here we're going to get lambda squared plus, and then 1 plus F1 times 3 plus F2. So those will be multiplied by one another. And then we'll be adding 1 plus F1 plus 3 plus F2 times lambda. I didn't quite give myself enough space there. Minus F1, F2. So it turns out that after we multiply this little bit together here, we get lambda squared plus 3 plus 3f1 plus f2 plus f1f2 minus f1f2 from here. So my F1 and F2s are going to cancel one another out. Plus this quantity here, 1 plus F1. Let me give myself a little bit more space again. 1 plus F1 plus 3 plus F2 times lambda. So now I'm going to isolate these pieces by lambda. So lambda squared plus... 1 plus F1 plus 3 plus F2. I can actually write that a little bit better than that. I can write this as F1 plus F2 plus 4 times lambda. And now I can add this to the non-lambda term. 
3 f1 plus f2 plus 3. And this must be equal to the poles as we'd like to see them. So here we're going to have lambda plus 2 squared, because we'd like our poles to be at minus 2 and minus 2. So I'll go ahead and multiply this out as lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 4. So now we can see our two system of equations that we'd like to have. I need this piece here to be equal to 4. And by coincidence, I need to have this piece here to also be equal to 4. So I can now write this by separating the terms of the equations and say that f1 plus f2 plus 4 must equal 4. And I can also write that 3f1 plus f2 plus 3 must equal 4. So with these two equations and two unknowns, now I can go ahead and solve for the f1 and f2. So on the next page I'll go ahead and paste this in. So these are my two equations. I'll go ahead and do the one on the left first. So it turns out that I can move the 4 over to the other side. f1 plus f2 must be equal to 0 or f1 is just equal to minus f2. So I'll use this as a fact in the next equation. 3 times minus f2 plus f2 is equal to 1. Or minus is equal to 1. Or minus 3 f2 plus f2 is minus 2 times f2 is equal to 1. Or f2 is equal to minus 1 half. Therefore, f1 is equal to minus minus one half or plus one half. So my final controller f is equal to one half minus one half. And this is the solution for part two.